killing. And I know that in the past, some uh, Samus players have said that really the ledge is what makes her. When she puts the opponent at the ledge and she's able to just cover so many options, deal so much damage, and even close stocks out there. So I think if you're Noku, when you get hit and you get put in the corner, you need to figure out how to get out of there. Otherwise, we could definitely see an upset. Oh, but it's actually Medosti who's trapped in the corner right now, eating right through the missile, not giving a damn. And, oh, yeah, he's been consistently just playing the Squirtle here. I agree with it. Squirtle's small height makes him actually kind of a tricky target for uh, Samus. And now that, you know, we're in the deeper end of things here, he goes to Ivy Storm and he does the tried and true, the Noku special. Gonna charge F Smash at ledge, and that's gonna connect, putting him with a massive lead right here. And, Ooh, what a cool combo to start things off. 40% off of that grab. <gasps> oh no, I don't know what happened to his jump. I was going to say, I really like the stall from Madasti. You know, he was really taking his time out there, made sure that Noku's neutral airs weren't going to actually hit him, but I think Noku realized he didn't have a jump, and that's why he was timing in his, his neutral airs in that way. Madasti not able to make it back to the stage, putting this at a three stock to one lead for Noku, and he is looking just absolutely dominant right here, abusing Ivy's source longer range with that back air, making it even tricky for Madasti to punish out of shield. Finally, that's the first real bit of stage positioning we've seen Matosti have in quite a while. Noku's re-grabbing the ledge and for the most part getting away with it. That being said, has not actually managed to find a way back to neutral. He's on Charizard at the ledge right now. He is the largest body of the three, meaning he's the biggest target, but also some survivability to go along with it. Let's see if that survivability will end up working out for him or whether... Oh, right there it does immediately. That up there probably would have killed any of the other Pokemon. Noku just looking, just fishing for a back air, an opening of some kind, holding shield forever, and look at that, the back air will come, 53%, I think that's death, no jump, he is gone, out of here, I don't even think he needed to do that down there, but oh boy, did he want to, that's gonna be a one game lead for Noku, looking really good right now. Oh, now I know that it felt like at the beginning, things were kind of going even a little bit. There was some back and forth here and there. But there were two pieces that really Pokemon broke the matchup from Adasi. One, he could not figure out how to kill. All right, so actually, I'm not going to do too much deconstruction of that last game because we need to get right into the next one, which has a very noticeable... Uh, there's, there's been a switch. And it is, in fact, swapping out the Samus for the... Uh, the I forgot what we call them. I like the term Beyblades, but I think it's a little bit too cute. The uh, the Aegis. Sweet swapping it out for the Aegis. Swap character versus swap character. Let's see who will end up coming out on top. Admittedly, you know, both of them can swap, but Pokemon Trainer has a lot more dynamism to his swapping. Uh, not only does it change certain properties like Oh no. Uh not even giving me any time to deconstruct what's going to happen here. Unfortunate. Madosti going to be losing that first stock. And when he was in control, to an unfortunate SD off my side. Unless we do... He is not shaking. Look at this. Noku at 129%. Almost dying right there. These pirate hits are just connecting. Oh, it, okay, no, he swapped back and then swapped again. That jab at the ledge, not quite enough to do it. Once again, Charizard's weight coming in clutch. That extra survivability really being meaningful. That was so interesting. We saw this massive fade back from Madosti. But as in, he was, like, pressuring him right there at the ledge. And then he went back to center stage. I'm, I was going to say, like, oh, he just kind of gave up the ledge. But I think he was maybe baiting Noku into going to the platform, which is where he eventually found his opening anyway. Very curious interaction, and as I was, you know, talking about that, a lot of damage has come out onto Madosti. He's dead. The down smash from Squirtle. He doesn't even. He didn't even need any of the other Pokemon characters. Oh man, look at this right now. It's just looking similar to Game One, honestly. Just Noku adjusted how like he needed to, and these adjustments are just paying off absolutely brutally.
Madosti managing to tie up the percentage, but there is an entire stock difference between the two of them. Swapping to the, I like the idea actually of going pirate at this percent. Squirtle is very light and you might get a cheesy kill. And a cheesy kill is probably one of the only ways you really manage to wrench control away from Noku at this point. Look at this, he's so comfortable. He's running up shielding. He is not that afraid of what Mondosti can pose here. And, all right, the recovery is actually a lot better. That's another reason he's going Pyra. I feel like the Mithril recovery can be easily just absolutely demolished by that uh, Ivysaur down air. But in the end, it's the Ivysaur up air that will be taking the set. That's going to be Noku moving on with a 2-0.